Penny stocks are important and I want you to trade them. I want you to at least consider using them within your trading strategy. And I wanna show you how and why this is the case. But I also wanna set up a little context before we go forward. Because if you don't do it the right way, if you approach penny stocks thinking you're like Warren Buffett, then you're just gonna get slaughtered. So I wanna set up a little context here. That way we can protect your portfolio and you're not like tilting on the edge of potentially sending you and your family to live under a bridge or in a cardboard box or something like that, okay? So I wanna set up a little context here. And also, I'm not gonna sit here and talk in theory at the same time. Like I said, I'll use the chalkboard here to set up the background context, but then I'm gonna take you to my monitor and show you some real life results of penny stocks and how and why they're actually quite worth it. So let's just make sure we're doing this the smart way. So this is you and what I'm recommending and the way I would wanna look at things and forgive me here, this is gonna this is supposed to be proportional, but knowing my RT skills, I highly doubt I'm gonna make it very proportional. And I totally failed. But these are supposed to each be representing 20%, right? You have, and I want you to port, uh, envision this as your portfolio, your entire portfolio, and then I want you to look at potentially 20% of it. 20%, so in other words, this little portion right here, I want you to use as, and just to keep the numbers straight, that's 20%. Now, I, I totally understand if like 20%, no, no, I, I don't wanna do that, then that, that's okay, maybe just 10%. But my core idea here, the, the idea that I'm trying to get across is that I would recommend some portion of your portfolio you get a little bit more risky with. Now, I'm gonna make a distinction here because I know what a lot of people think, and like, oh, risky. So that just means, yeah, let's go to the casino. That's not what I'm saying, okay? So when I say risky, so we have high risk because yeah, penny stocks are high risk, okay? There, there's no doubt about that. And there's no need to beat around the bush and just try to make it seem like, well, no, no, they're, they're high risk, okay? But the idea with this is that they're also high reward. So you take a lot of risk, sure, but you can have some very, very nice reward. But the thing with this, and this is what's going on here underneath it all, and this is very, very important, is that, or let me take a step back. This is actually the why, right? So why should you do it? Cheap chalk. That is why, because they are high reward. So that's the why. But we also have to think about, okay, well, what about the how? How do you do, how do you, should you do it? And this is not where, like I said earlier, I don't want you to think, oh, well, you, you, the, re, the way you do it, you just treat it like Las Vegas, a casino, no. So down here we have the how, and the how is based around a tool where if you've watched any of my channel, you, you know that I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of this tool, but this tool is technical charts. And the reason why technical charts are so important is because these in and of themselves, when it comes to drama, ba-boom, ba-boom. They're a great drama eliminator. And here's a little hint. The world of penny stocks is filled with drama. Drama everywhere. And if you've traded a penny stock at all, been on social media or message boards, you know exactly what I mean. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. But you know what? Technical charts are a great way to just ignore the drama, block it out. It's like a shield against the drama. It doesn't let you get all hypnotized by the drama out there. It's a great, great way to keep this from gambling, to keep this from just doing something very, very stupid with your money. So technical charts, a vital part of this. So just to recap, before we go to my desktop, if you're gonna do penny stocks or, or some sort of you know, high risk type situation, a small portion of your portfolio, no more than 20%. Why are you doing any of this? Again, because sure it's high risk, we gotta acknowledge that, but there's high reward. But how are you gonna do all this the right way? So the how, Use technical charts because they are a great drama killer. So now let's go to my desktop.
Welcome to my desktop. Before we get into the actual results here, just a quick FYI for those of you that are members or maybe you're thinking about becoming a member, but this is where these results are coming from. So if you go to the member portal, which is what you see after logging into your account, of course, assuming you're a member, then you can just click right there on weekly newsletter and you can see a big archive of all the past scans that I've sent out. So you can go back as far as you want and see lots of other examples, but that is where these three examples are coming from. Now this first example that was sent out to members for ticker symbol SEEL, you can see I just classified it as a volume alert due to this big spike in volume. And the big question just became, you know, could it break up above that 200 SMA, which is represented by that red line? So that was the whole premise going in. Big volume, but could it actually push through that level? Let's see how it played out. I should also note that these alerts are always sent out over the weekend, that way members have plenty of time to look them over, you know, analyze them on their own. So there's no like last second minute, you know, decision making that needs to play out. Plenty of time for everybody to think. But my point here is that this happened over the weekend. So right here was on Friday. So the next candle you're gonna see would represent Monday of the next week. So you can see right there, got a little bit of a breakout. Need to consolidate just a little bit, but nothing drastic, just a good healthy consolidation. You can see made another push up there, made another push, and then made yet another push, and then made another push, and has since consolidated as of the recording of this video. So 50% so far. Now, am I saying that any member played it perfectly and put 50% into their pocket? That's not what I'm trying to imply. What I'm trying to get across here is that, hey, you know what? A 50% move in a matter of basically a week and a half, not too bad, not too bad at all. Small size, of course, because we want to limit our exposure because these are high-risk plays, as I've already talked about at the chalkboard, but, Hey, you know what, 50% in a few days, I mean, even if you messed up half the trade, that's 25%. I mean, you can go into your local bank if you want and you know, look at the, the CD rates. They're not gonna be on where we're close to 25% in two weeks, I, I can guarantee you that. But overall, nice example there of a breakout and maybe some members are still holding, so maybe that 50% goes up even more, but as of, like I said, the recording of this video, it is so far moved 50% and created an opportunity window of a, a very nice amount. The next one here to take a look at, ticker symbol SRNE. You can see category here was just a breakout back test, meaning the breakout had already happened, but it was just a question of this $2.20 mark. Could the price pull back, consolidate there, and then eventually start to work its way back up there? So that was the big thing to watch and the big dynamic to you know kind of keep in mind going forward. So let's see how this one played out. Before I get to this, I do realize that technically this is not a penny stock, quote unquote, because it's not below a dollar, but there are a lot of definitions out there. In my mind, anything essentially below $10 is a penny stock because they're very high risk, high reward type plays. I'm, I'm well aware some people would say, no, Clay, it's literally got to be below a dollar. Some people would say it's $5 and below. Some people would just say, no, they're just small cap stocks. It's just micro cap stocks, no matter what the price. So there's a variety of definitions out there. But my core definition, the general philosophy here is they're just high risk plays, right? They're just high risk stocks. That could be uh, you know, a hundred dollar stock really could be technically a penny stock if you're classifying it as high risk, if some sort of hundred dollar stock is moving all over the place. But at the core, like I said, I would consider this a high risk situation. So sure, it's not technically below a dollar, but that is my definition of a penny stock because I can already see it in the comment section below. Clay, SRNE, that was a $2 stock. That's not a penny stock. But now you at least know how I'm personally defining penny stocks. But let's see how this one all played out here. Again, we're looking for a back test of that $2.20 mark, which is represented there by the green line. So you can see pulled back a little bit, never quite hit it, did some more consolidating, made a move upwards, and then pulled back. And you can see right there, hit it very nicely. Was kind enough to drop back down there again and give people uh, an opportunity to hop back in. And then you're gonna notice patience was definitely required. But this is why small size also is very helpful. Yes, you wanna use small size because these are high risk as we've established. But when you have small size and it's not some sort of massive, massive amount of your account that's you know influencing everything, then yeah, you can sit back and it's, it's much easier to be patient with these things when, like I said, one little movement here or there is not ultimately, you know, dramatically shifting your entire portfolio. So we'll keep on moving here. Nice movement up, really starts to come to life some more. And then, ba-boom, there it goes. And to take note, nothing here. There is no crazy movements. It's not like the price before that big move happened went all the way down here. And at that case situation, okay, yeah, you'd have probably been stopped out of your position. 
There, there was nothing crazy. There was nothing bizarre that would have, you know, patience. Yes, that was definitely required. Hence the little, you know, discussion we just had on it. But there was no crazy movements. So the only kind of annoyance about this one was, yeah, you just had to wait a little bit. You had to let things play out. But for those that let things play it out, you can see it boomed and went all the way up to that $10 mark before pulling back, which was good for a 354% opportunity window. Once more, I'm not sitting here saying that any member played the bottom and top perfectly and walked away with 354%. But once again, let's just say you screwed up half the trade. That's still over 150% in basically a month. I'd encourage you to walk into your local bank and say, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me, sir. I would like 150% return on my money in the next month. And take a cell phone with you, record their reaction. They'll probably call the police on you because they're gonna think you're a crazy person. So I mean, let's even say you only got 35% on it. You screwed up 90% of the trade and you walked away with 35%. <laughs> Again, walk into your local bank and say, excuse me, sir, excuse me, ma'am. I would like 35% on my money in the next month. And again, please take your phone out, record it, send it to me. I'd love to see their the expression on their face when they say, what, did you just say 35% in one month? I, uh, sorry, sir, sorry, ma'am. Behind me, you can see our bank CD rates. And uh, as of right now, it's 1.2% for the next six months. All right, this is totally impromptu. As I'm making the joke, I just kind of, you know, I wonder what bank rates actually are right now. So I went to bankrate.com right now to look up the CD rates. And here you can see just one year, three year, five year, and look at that. One year, 1.35%, 1%, Look at five year, 1.4. Really, that's the current, that's crazy. And yet here we just had 35%, and that assumes you screwed up 90% of the trade in one month. And here we have one year, wow, crazy, crazy stuff. But like I said, it kinda was like, I wonder what the, the CD rates are, and here they are, at least as of the recording of this video. And then the final, alert that we'll use as an example that was sent out was for ticker symbol M-A-R-K. You can see it was in a technical pattern uh, category that I put it in, ascending triangle. So you can see the, the drawing of the ascending triangle right here. And that key breakout point of the triangle was right up there. You can see mapped out there at the 61 cent mark. So let's see how this all played out. Now, assuming you are watching this video relatively soon after uh, it's it's been published, I'm sure you know exactly what's gonna happen here with M-A-R-K because this one, has uh, been in the headlines quite a bit. There's been lots of traders that have been trading it, and maybe you watching this have traded it. Uh, but like, as, like I said, as far as my community was concerned, you can see this is where uh, my community was alerted to it. If you got it even lower than that 60 cent mark, then hey, congratulations to you. Very, very well done. But as far as you know, the, the members of my community, this is where it was alerted to them. And we have the technical formation here again, as you saw with that ascending triangle. So let's see how this one played out. And you can see members did have, not have to wait long. Got the breakout on that Monday. You can see pulled back a little bit, but very, very quickly recovered back upwards. And then you can see just didn't waste any time. Up it went even further, pulled back a little bit. And then you can see just continued on up which so far has made a move of 484%. I'm just gonna keep on repeating myself here. I'm not trying to imply any member made 484%. But again, let's say you screwed up 90% of the trade. That's 48.4% in your pocket after basically, let's just call it to make the math easy, one month. So again, you saw the bank interest rates. Do we want for five years, and let's, let's just call it 5%. I don't believe those numbers are right, honestly, because if those are actually right, that's the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Five years and one point. So I don't believe those. Let's just say that it's actually five years for 5%, just because that's, I refuse to believe those numbers are actually real. But okay, five years for 5% or one month for 48%. I don't think I need to say any more. That's why penny stocks are important. That's why any sort of higher risk thing should be paid attention to because yeah, it needs to be logical. Yes, there needs to be a strategy. I mean, that's how you do it, right? You do it for actual reasoning. As I said at the chalkboard, that's why technical analysis, it's great. You know, it blocks out the drama. It keeps you away from all the falling into the traps of, you know, wanting to, you know, do very silly things. And it just keeps you laser focused on an actual strategy. And in this situation, worked out very, very well.
I'm actually really curious. Down in the comment section, what are the current bank CD rates right now? If you have enough time to go to some site and look those up, I'm just curious. I think it'd be fun to keep that tracking. That way, those of you that are maybe watching this video a year from now, uh, we can see what bank CD rates are at that point. But I'm curious because, I mean, was was those numbers right that I was seeing? If they are right, then, oh, that's, I, isn't that illegal or something? I don't know, but like I said, in the comment section, what are the current bank CD rates? at the time that you're watching this video. But hopefully you see now the power of penny stocks and why there should be something that are at least considered. And you know, like I said, it's much easier to be patient, like I said previously here, when you have the smaller amount because it's not like your whole entire portfolio is depending on this where you're freaking out, losing sleep, nothing like that. Small amount is gonna be much easier to have more patience. And like you saw with some of those examples, a little patience was required, but ultimately it turned out to be very, very high reward. Now, if you enjoyed the video and you want me to make more videos like this, quick, easy way to communicate that to me, just hit that like button, really appreciate it. It's a great communication tool to me. Also, leave a comment down below, of, again, the bank CD rates, but any comments, questions, suggestions you have for future videos, I'd love to hear from you. And if you've ever watched any of my other videos, then you know that I do read and reply comments and I try to reply to all the comments. So if you leave a comment, I will reply. And then finally, just check out the channel as a whole. Hopefully like what you see enough to the point where you wanna take action and hit that subscribe button. So yeah, definitely consider high risk assets such as penny stocks, but make sure you're doing it in a very, very smart way where it's not gambling, but you have some sort of tool that's gonna allow you to ignore that drama. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.